I felt pretty much for the first time in my career on screen, I think that there was a sort of understanding that we, that we were going to make, be able to make the show that we wanted to make because actually originally we'd come and said, here's what the show is, I think. And it hadn't been one of those processes where you spend ages and ages like in rooms, having meetings, trying to sort of convince each other you've got the same vision because we had sort of written some of it before and then sort of gave it and said, here's what we sort of think it is. And that, that makes a huge difference. George, you just wanted to try and get, yeah, an idea of kind of how you reacted to the script and, and, and how you saw that kind of representation visually and trying to really bring it to, you know, to life. Well, Lucy writes sort of incredibly like in depth. So I, I really remember like once our AD had put a schedule together for a day and he was like, it's just one scene. And I was like, have you read it? It's like five scenes, mate, in one. <laughs> it's kind of the best way to describe it in that it's so layered. It, it, and so when you just read the source material, it's like you read it once as a director and then you read it again and you read between the lines and then again and again. And, you know, she has a, a beautiful tapestry in the way that she writes like that and which is... Um, it's such a great starting point. And I think like, like Lucy said, it is, it was, it's very exciting to look at something where you can play with every episode in a different way and emotionally in a different way. So it kind of started there really. I was like, I just, I just looked at lots and lots of reference and thought, okay, we've got two tasks here, which felt quite unusual. One is like, what's the look and the style of the show? And secondary, it's like, what's the look and style of every episode? So, so what's the glue that holds us together? And of course, you know, that's also Billy and Layla and Dan and, and Nat and all the great actors who hold the characters through the through line. But then visually, like, how do we play and how do we explore? But I had one very simple rule, and that was that we are always in Susie's perspective. And that, and that can be literally or it can be emotionally, but that we never, never ever can are allowed behind her or in front of her as an audience, because you have to live this emotionally. And as soon as you kind of made, as soon as I sort of made that rule, if you like, it, everything became easier. And it means also that you can be really experimental, you can be fantastical, you can kind of go anywhere you want to go if legitimately the character goes there. And you've seen the second episode, I mean. Oh yeah. There's one particular scene that it's... They oh, told me not to swear, but, you know, she's pretty fucked up. And it's like, <laughs> just caveat. And, and, the, and the, like, physical, there's a lot of drinking drugs involved. And it's like, so again, as a director, you're like, okay, well, I'm in this character's perspective, so I'm in her perspective. And, and you get to sort of use all the tools and all the filmmaking kind of, like, uh, playfulness to really project that. So it's, it's a really unique project like that. I mean, it's like a dream project as a director. And I think that all those elements as well really kind of almost kind of really get to the depth of her kind of, you know, her despair almost at, at times as well. You know, the kind of the, the almost kind of fantastical elements of it kind of really heighten how you see her emotionally, I think, as a, as a viewer, for sure. Yeah, totally. And we don't just, you know, beyond episode two, we sort of, we... I'd like to think it will continually surprise the audience because if you ever think you've got a hold of it, it, it hopefully will just spin you 180 again. Yeah. And it just, we just got to play in so many different genres. So um, I'm excited to either <laughs> watch past episode two. <laughs> yeah. Um, Leila, Naomi in, in episode two, we learned quite a lot about Naomi in episode two. Um, <laughs> but what, what you do discover is that these, these two characters are kind of, you know, they've been friends for a very long time. They've been through a lot together. Was that kind of almost, was that a nice thing to well, talk to me if you and Billy kind of talked about that and worked on that in terms of talking about kind of what went on before we find them, you know, in terms of how that I mean, brings I us to where they are now. I think female friendship is not like really examined very much and how um, if you've been friends with someone since you were very little you sort of get stuck and you're not there's not much room for you to evolve as people and so there's a lot of love between these two women but I think sometimes they don't like each other and <clears throat> that's quite unpalatable for, for most people I don't know there's um the, the friendship is is very interesting it's it's codependent and um, Naomi sort of lives for for Susie, um, which is an act of love, but also slightly um, self-effacing. So mm. it's very confused. And Susie does love Naomi, but 
it's it's new it's very layered what was your reaction when you when you first read the script oh my god i i, I, I want to be in this <laughs> when i first first read it um yeah excited and just recognizing it I was like yes finally it's ugly and it's flawed and it's grotesque at points and that's just what we're like and people just want to polish everything up and make everything neat and it's such a relief to read something that's both clever and true um so yes i was very excited when i read it um dan can we talk a little bit about cobb um how would you describe him um he is a very repressed man <laughs> <laughs> he's in this he's in this marriage which he needs and which he relies on and I think he's managed to sort of convince himself um, that he is in charge of the situation I think and particularly on a sort of emotional level and I guess Susie and Cobb have sort of boxed themselves into this place where, where their marriage is, is um, in some ways quite comfortable in that in that the issues between them are never addressed. And um, uh, and I guess throughout the course of the series, you, you know, it seems at first that he's quite a sort of doting parent and husband. And again, I guess as the series goes on, you realize that that's not, that's not the whole story. Um, there's a lot of anger there and a lot of, um, there's a lot of resentment, I think, that he feels like he, he I think there's, there's this kind of seething resentment that he's already been emasculated by the fact that his wife is so much more successful than him, that she's the breadwinner. And so I suppose when this, um, this kind of, what he sees, like, he sees is like an injury to him mm. through the phone hacking, when that happens, I think that brings up a lot of um, latent rage. <laughs> Misanthropy, is that what I was? Yeah, it's the quiet bubbling that you even get kind of in, up, you know, between episode two. It's just simmering and you're like, oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the simmeringness of it is, is largely due to the fact that um, Georgie's a good director and, and uh, <laughs> Lucy's a good writer. I, my, my instinct was always to sort of um, push the rage because it was so fun. And I think, I think you know, what, what, what Georgie did, so cleverly was was kind of make sure that that was that that, that was sort of held in and, and withheld you know and that you get glimpses of it and more and more as it goes on yeah um andrew in terms of of you know producing a, a show like this what are the what are the biggest challenges because you know as georgie was saying kind of each each episode has its own kind of sort of not aesthetic but it's got it's it's kind of own uniqueness in a way is is that a kind of joy as a producer in terms of the challenges that that throws up yeah absolutely i think i think the show is really interesting because although it's a very intimate story it, it's it, it's very ambitious in terms of the sheer amount of locations and cast and then you meet a director like georgie who comes in and goes it's already ambitious but what i want to do on top of that is basically make a series that also contains an element almost of of, of individual films but that all still hold together like this beautiful series um so yeah it's a real joy it's a challenge but you go oh yeah this is going to be this is going to be great mm -hmm. when um when you have something that is that it that is kind of really sort of direct and honest and you know you have a channel involved and you have a production um company involved as well it, it feels like watching it that you were really allowed to make the show that you wanted to make in terms of is that an is that an easy thing to achieve at the minute and did you were you able to make the show that you wanted to make um yes i think we had i think um sky and bad wolf everyone understood what was so special about this project um everyone understood that the collaboration between lucy and billy was just the heart of it and the heart of everything and that that was always kind of the thing we always returned to. And we were really lucky that we had Billy and Lucy on set with us the whole time. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I, we've all been asked about, you know, was it difficult to get this past the channel or that past the channel? And actually we didn't really have those sort of conversations. Obviously everything went through compliance as it always does, but everyone was, was, everyone was so on the same page actually. It was, 
it's sorry, it's a very dull answer, but actually <laughs> we were very we were very supported, I think. Yeah, yeah and, it's, and that's really unusual, I yeah. think, in in my experience anyway. I mean there are there are there are obviously exceptions to that. And you think about some of the big streamers and stuff who sort of pride themselves on saying, here's the money, go away, make what you want to make. But I don't know how true that is, firstly. And secondly, that's really difficult to do in this country where there's so little money comparatively and there's so little sort of time and, and, it's, and, and we're under different sorts of stresses and pressures. So it was, yeah, it was pretty great. There, there were suggestions and there were sometimes, you know, thoughts, but I, I felt pretty much for the first time in my career on screen, I think, that there was a sort of understanding that we that we were going to make, be able to make the show that we wanted to make because actually originally we'd come and said, here's what the show is, I think. And it hadn't been one of those processes where you spend ages and ages, like in rooms, having meetings, trying to sort of convince each other you've got the same vision because we had sort of written some of it before and then sort of gave it and said, here's what we sort of think it is. And that, that makes a huge difference. But yeah, kudos to Sky for allowing that and, and doing that. And I think that actually industry-wise, it's quite a good move because I feel like the one of the great advantages of getting artists to work here rather than going to those big streamers is going to be saying creatively, you know, if, 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 if we're not going to spend that massive, massive amount of money, we're going to actually offer you um, creative powers and control and sort of stuff like that. And, and I, yeah, I, I feel very grateful for that.